Hello and welcome to Weeknights. Alexia Boland with you for your Wednesday night. Plenty to get through tonight, especially if you are a fan of BMX. Shepparton is fast gaining the reputation as a BMX hub of Victoria, with another big event on its way later this year. And slowing you down on GB highways for the sake of our wildlife, with a campaign to reduce the amount of roadkill in the GV. Also later in the show, Peter Cardamoni talking soccer as the GV Suns try to reclaim some glory. But first to your local news headlines. Greater Shepparton City Council has released its draft budget for the new financial year and ratepayers are going to pay more. Rates are set to rise by 4.95% on average and there'll be information sessions held during July. Echuca police are appealing for public's help following several thefts from farms. Thousands of dollars worth of equipment, electrical goods and other items were taken from three rural properties between last Thursday and Saturday. Police believe the break-ins may be linked. And parents across the GV are being urged to learn more about cannabis use during Drug Action Week. New stats show 65% of parents are unaware of the legal consequences if their children are caught with cannabis. Well, it seems the hard work has paid off for Shepparton after getting rave reviews for staging the BMX Nationals in April. After impressing BMX officials and competitors with a challenging course, Shepparton's now been chosen for another big event this year, the BMX State Titles in November, as Penelope Lish reports. Look, we're delighted to announce hot on the heels of the BMX Nationals that we hosted in April that we've been announced as the host venue for the 2015 Victorian BMX Championships. So that's great news for Greater Shepparton. Shepparton can expect business to boom as competitors flock to town for the event scheduled for November next year. Typically we'd get around a thousand competitors based on previous Victorian championships. So whilst there may be a thousand competitors, we may get up to three thousand visitors coming in for the for the championships. Shepparton has the second internationally accredited BMX track in the country and the only one in Victoria, making it a crowd favourite for big events. Because we've got such a great track, uh, the competitors really enjoy themselves. There's some really fantastic feedback that we get for the events here. The local BMX community has been credited with getting the event to Shep. There was a lot of competition for next year's event, but the meetings at Shep are always really great. The uh, Shep community really get behind the events. There's a really strong following. Obviously, we've got such a great track here. These kind of facilities can't get up and running unless there's a really strong host community. And there are plenty of opportunities to get involved for young and old, with BMX Victoria having riders aged from under four to over 60. It's just a healthy sport. It's fun, but it's really exciting. And since it became an Olympic sport, there's really somewhere to go in it. Well, it was a very tough day back in April when rising Albury Tigers star James McQuillan seriously injured his spine during a game against the Yarrawonga Pigeons. Since then, those two local footy communities have formed the James McQuillan Future Fund to ensure James and his family have the money to cover expensive rehab bills. Ashley Gardner joins us now. And Ash, it's great to see a number of Arvins and Murray Football League clubs doing their part in fundraising for James. Yeah, that's right, Lex. I'm at JC Low Oval in Yarrawonga, where the Yarrawonga Pigeons will be hosting a fundraiser this weekend for the James McQuillan Future Fund. Joining me now is captain and co-coach of the Pigeons, Drew Barnes. Thank you so much for your time today. No worries, thank you. Talk me through the event details. Yeah, so this Saturday we're holding um, you know, a, big event, a big event for James McQuillan uh, for his fund. Uh, to try and give him some money to, to really get back on track for his recovery. So it's happening here at the JC uh, Low Oval, uh, starting at around about 11 o'clock. And we've got a guest speaker, Mike uh, Fitzpatrick, that's coming up from, from Melbourne. Um, so, I mean, it should be a fantastic day. They're expecting 100-plus uh, up in the club room. So hopefully we can get together and um, really try and raise some funds and, and, and get that sort of channeled to, to the McQuillan Fund for him. And this Saturday is quite significant in that it's the first game against Albury since the incident actually happened. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's been nine, uh, ten weeks now since we've played Albury and uh, look, James is still uh, in recovery mode. So there is still a few guys that have got um, him always in the back of your mind. But 
uh, we're a team that have, have been great rivals over the last five years. So it's fantastic that we can put uh, that incident aside and really um, get together and try and um, you know, assist him where we can. And why was it so important for you guys to support the fund? Well, it's, it's important. I mean, you don't want to see anything like that happen to a country footballer. And, and we had quite, I mean, we had 21 guys and all of our uh, supporters there on the day. And, and it, it really did impact the club uh, significantly. Um, so, look, everyone around the club just wanted to stick their hand up and uh, assist where we could, just to, again, just to try and get him back to that, uh, into recovery. Drew, thank you so much for your time and all the best for the weekend. No worries, thank you. A great event for a great cause. Lex, it's now back to you. Thanks, Ash. And you can find those details on donating to the fund on our weeknight's Facebook page. Stay with us after the break. We'll break down the Shepparton Council budget for you and we look at reducing the level of roadkill on GV highways. Just some more local weeknights headlines for you now. And a Shepparton man charged over a crash last year has had his case adjourned. 33-year-old Shepparton man Wesley Scott is facing 19 offences, including dangerous driving. He's accused of colliding with another car on Yamurka Road in July, injuring a woman. He'll reappear in court on August 4. Parks Victoria is seeking information following several recent parties in and around Echuca. They say several parks have been left damaged or covered in rubbish after a string of rave parties. Parks Victoria is reminding people they can be prosecuted under the Environmental Protection Act. And a Kyala local will be put through his paces in a stair climbing challenge this weekend. Alan Connolly is climbing stadium stairs as part of the stadium stomp competition, with the first of three events taking place at the Gather in Brisbane on Sunday. Well, as we mentioned, ratepayers will be hit with a rise as part of Shepparton City Council's latest budget and there are a few big money projects on the drawing board. More than $5 million has been promised for the building of the Greater Shepparton Regional Sports Precinct and more than a million dollars will go towards upgrading the Katandra Community Centre. But Council CEO Gavin Cater says it's a sensible budget for the new financial year. Renewal basically is, is keeping the roads, keeping our buildings, keeping our curb and shuttle, our drainage, our recreation reserves at the standard that they are now. And if we don't spend that money on those assets, they will slowly deteriorate into the future. The City of Greater Shepparton's draft budget sees a rate increase of 4.95%. This year's been a significant change to people's rates. There'll be variations up and down from the 4.95% increase. The council's rating strategy is in its second year and means rates vary greatly between properties. There would be increases in some areas and decreases in the other. Um, it's very much a case-by-case -case basis for, for ratepayers. Council is urging ratepayers to attend community information sessions to better understand what they'll be paying. I'd stress that the ratepayers come along to, to the information sessions learn about the budget and ask questions of council staff. There's some big spending in the budget with $5.1 million going toward the Greater Shepparton Regional Sports Precinct. The, the Greater Shepparton uh, Regional Sporting Precinct is, is a multi-year project and one that's going to benefit the, the community for, for a long time. There's also works around the region such as Katandra West Community Centre, Marutna Community Storage Shed, uh, which, will, which will help the community. The council plans to borrow $2 million in the next year to help pay for the Greater Shepparton Regional Sports Precinct. However, they're reminding ratepayers this is a long-term project. It's a prudent way of, of funding long-term jobs rather than making ratepayers of today pay for it all at once. We can spread it out over the years so that all those ratepayers in the future that are also benefiting from the asset uh, are paying their share as well. The public has the chance to comment on the budget and raise concerns with councillors before the measures are voted on on the 5th of August. 
Well, driving on Victoria's roads during the winter months can be challenging and unpredictable, especially when you add rain and foggy conditions to the mix. And it's at this time of year when we see a spike in the amount of roadkill. So GV drivers are being urged to stay more alert for local wildlife, as Ashley Gardner reports. Yeah, a lot of extra animals come in this time of the year because it gets darker earlier. Traffic, people coming home from work are driving in the dark now and we get the fog and the rain and the animals are on the move because they're all nocturnal which causes car accidents and animals getting hurt and injured. Pulled from their mother's pouches on the roadside, these baby wombats are just a few of the orphaned animals to make their way here to the haven. The local wildlife sanctuary is part of the Wise Trust. Property manager Andrew Voss says he's witnessed a spike in the number of native wildlife being dropped off by passing motorists. Within one fortnight, two weeks, we end up with five young wombats come in. We had a couple young joeys come in, which didn't make it, but... We're here to try. And with around 100 animals at the sanctuary in need of varying levels of care, it can be a big job looking after so many injured wildlife. Well, depending on how small the animals are, some of the baby wombats and joeys and things have got to be put into incubators and brooders and on heat pads. Um, some come in with a bit of fur, some come in bald, still as little joeys. And most of the wombats and kangaroos can take up to two years of rehabilitation and getting them back into the wild again. Andrew's message for motorists is simple, slow down and reduce the risk of a collision. When it's wet, foggy and dark, it doesn't hurt to drop a few k's off your speed, just to slow down and it gives you more of a chance to see the animal when it comes out on the road and gives the animal a chance to get away from your vehicle. Plenty more to come after the break. This week's cheapest fuel and Cal's standing by for the daily drop-in. Welcome back to Weeknights. Cal's standing by for the daily drop-in. What's been happening, Cal? Yeah, hello. Look, lots of excitement uh, going on 3SR FM after 9 o'clock. Usually it happens before 9, but uh, this week we're giving away double passes. That sounds fairly, you know, normal. I understand that. But Kings of Country isn't normal. Not something that we'd be usually giving away on 3SR FM. But these guys have been selling out in the US. Uh, think Willie Nelson, Kenny Rogers, Johnny Cash. Big names, kings of country, and they're playing at the Westside Performing Arts Centre, and we can't wait for it. Uh, we're giving them away these passes, and I'll be giving some away tomorrow. You've got to listen out for the sounds of country. What does that mean, you say? I know, it sounds a bit vague. Listen out. Here's an example of what you should be listening for. That's something that sounds like country, at least what everyone told me here at uh, 3SR FM Studio. So give me a call tomorrow from 9 o'clock. Only two more days uh, to take advantage of it and we'll see if we can give away some more double passes. Thanks for that, Cal. We'll see you on the radio tomorrow. Now, if you're under 30, the subject of superannuation can be a big yawn, but tonight Tracy Sofra is happy to share some wise advice for young workers on planning for their future. Look, it's our passion to educate young people on, on the simplicity of investing and the fact that they don't need a lump sum of money to invest. It's really just lunch money. It is simple and the earlier they start, the greater choices they will have as they get older, in their 30s and 40s and so on. And do you have a Save Your Age program that can help with that? It's very simple and it is, as it's badged, Save Your Age. So if you're 35, you add two zeros on the end of that and you save 3,500 a year. If you're starting at 35, it's great to start in your 20s. So 36, then 36 double zero and so on. Um, an example I can give you of that, if you start in your 20s and you go for 40 years, sounds like a long time, but simplicity in itself, saving a little bit every week on your age, can amount to as much as $500,000 in 40 years at a 5% average rate of return. So, you know, it's not rocket science. Over to Peter Cardamone now and talking some soccer for his Wednesday night sport. Hello everyone, welcome to Wednesday Night Weeknight Sport. Yes, nice to have your company too, Alexia. Let's take a look at all the results on the weekend. It was RPL competition round 12 matches, and more importantly, South went head-to-head -head with United. The winners, let's take a look. Well, it was Shep South on Saturday night football, 7pm at McEwen Reserve. They were first taking on Shep United, 
in second, and it was a 4-1 win to Shepherd and South. Well done to them. Goal scorers Kane, Scott, Birchall and Nash found the back of the net once each, and Kane was best for the Southerners. For United, Kevin Lomax, he was brilliant. He scored their only goal, but it was also best for the Combine. Now, what about the game between the Cobram Tigers third v Cobram Victory fifth? And the Cobram Tigers flexed their muscles. They were three nil winners over the victory. Let's take a look at the ladder after round 12. Well, Shepherd and South at the moment on 24, followed by United on 16, Cobram Soccer Club on 13, Tatura on 11, and they've got a three-point break over the Cobram victory, but next week matches becomes vital. And of course, Kai on the bottom of the ladder on zero points at the moment, but doing a pretty good job, Shabar Mehmet and the boys from Kai Let's take a look at this weekend's coming matches for round 13. Cobram, third. They take on Shep United, second. That's going to be a cracking game. Of course, South will have the weekend off. So too does Kyabram. And they'll watch Shepherd and South first take on Tatura, fourth. And this is a much-needed win, or at least a draw from the Ibis, to keep the Cobram victory boys away. Now, let's take a look at the leading goal scorers after round 12 in the RPL. Louis Clark from Cobram Victories on 14 goals. Carl Lamb, the star from United on 12. Adam Scott from Shep Souths on 10. So too with Jared Cunniff, the boy from the Ibis from Tatura on 10. Shawnee Kane from Shep South on 9. And Shawnee Ellis, the Cobram Soccer Club star, he is on 7. And on the weekend, well done to the GV Suns. They got the draw against South Melbourne. It was, yes, 14th v 1st. They were away from home and they got a one-all draw against South Melbourne. Well done to the GV Suns. And in the under-20 game, it was a 3-0 loss to South Melbourne. The GV Suns, not good enough, but they came up against some of the stars of tomorrow from South Melbourne. So, Alexia, on this Wednesday night, it has been a big week of sports so far. Don't forget, tomorrow night, David Turkovic will join us, the eight-time league best and fairest. And then, of course, our man on the... He's on the money each and every Friday. Jace Kelly, our GVFL expert, will join us for Friday Night Weeknight Sport. Alexia, on this Wednesday night, it is now back to you. Thanks, Carters. And go the Socceroos against the Netherlands tomorrow for anyone planning to set the alarm for the early kickoff. Let's go to our weekly check of fuel prices across the valley, starting with unleaded. And you are going to get the best deal if you're anywhere near Wallen this week. Unleaded is selling there for $1.44.8 a litre. The most expensive fuel this week can be found in Daniloquin at $1.58, with Benalla drivers also filling up for close to that at $1.57. And looking at diesel fuel prices now, and while well in a game, the cheapest price to fill up, Denny, Benalla and Yarrawonga Diesel is selling for around $1.61. We'll have more from weeknights for you soon, including your local weather forecast. Welcome back. You're watching Weeknights. It's time for a final check of what's made local headlines today. A number of workers across regional Victoria have been backpaid close to $50,000 following an investigation by the Ombudsman. An Achuka Cafe manager in her 20s has received $20,000 after working extra hours without pay for 12 months. Ombudsman Natalie James says it's important employers are aware of workplace laws. Pea platers across the GV will soon be able to drive V8s and turbocharged cars, with some vehicle restrictions set to be lifted from July. Transport Minister Terry Mulder says laws will be changed to a system based on power-to-weight ratios. And the Liberal Party says it will be running a candidate in the seat of Euroa at November's state election. It's put an end to speculation over whether the Liberals would field a candidate to run against the Nationals' Steph Ryan. Now it's that time again. It's over to tonight's Weather Whiz Kid. Hi, my name's Jasmine. I'm in Year 3 at Shepherdese Primary School. I'm today's Weather Whiz Kid. Here's the weather. On the national satellite image, we can see Victoria remains quite clear for the moment, but a front could be on its way, moving across from WA in coming days. Meanwhile, a large high is pushing showers and winds onto the eastern seaboard. 
It was a pretty brisk day across the region today with a foggy start in some parts. Shepparton reached a top of 14. It was a similar story in Bendigo and up along the border, while there were cloudy skies down in Melbourne too. We saw a bit of cloud around Deniliquin early on with a max of 15 degrees, the same temperature and mainly fine in Echuca and Kyabram. And it was slightly cooler for Benalla and Seymour. And turning to tomorrow, it's looking like the temperatures are set to drop. We can expect another foggy start in Shepparton with a top temperature of just 12 degrees. It will be the same for Bendigo too. Albury will reach 14 and it's the same if you're making the trip down to Melbourne. Denny can expect a cloudy top of 14 degrees. Achuka and Kyabram won't escape a foggy start, but things will clear to, to reach around tops of 13 and just 12 degrees. Cooling right down for 12 degrees in Benalla and Seymour, only managing an expected top of 11. Tomorrow morning we won't see the sunrise till around 7.29. It'll then set tomorrow night at 10 past 5. And looking ahead for the rest of the week, it's staying pretty chilly. 14 right across the border on Friday in Shep, where we'll see some showers and for Benalla and Echuca as well. It'll be 15 down in Melbourne with some showers about. We can expect a wet and cold start to the weekend with 13 on the way in Shepparton, 12 degrees in Benalla. 14 is on the way in Echuca, while Melbourne can again expect 15 degrees on Saturday. That was the weather. I'd like to say hi to my parents, brothers and my sister. Tomorrow on weeknights, time running out to have your say on the new bridge for Yarrawonga Mwela. And with more winter rain on the way, the SES is urging us to get flood smart. That's tomorrow. For now, I'm Alexia Boland. Here comes the project. Have a great night.